Hey, this is Jim McDonald. Welcome to episode 210 of the PowerCast. This episode features our conversation with George Lockhart. He's the cream of the crop in nutritional consultants for the cream of the crop in the UFC. And right now, he's working with Conor McGregor as he prepares to step away from the UFC long enough to face Floyd Mayweather in the boxing ring. If you saw any of the press conference, you know that this thing's going to be a monster. Because George was at the McGregor camp in Ireland, we weren't sure how long we were going to get to talk to him, so we got some more opinions on the fight from retired UFC fighter and Team Alpha Male member and coach Danny Castillo and Amadeo Novella, strength and conditioning coach for several of the Alphas. Both guys have been on the show before. They're longtime friends of ours. You'll notice that we're doing more interviews on the phone lately. We'll be continuing to mix those in going forward as it will allow us to connect with some guests that we would have a hard time getting into the gym to record in person, particularly on a timely basis around a time-bound subject. As a personal request from me, Please continue to support the Kickstarter for Westside vs. the World, the documentary about powerlifting and Westside Barbell at westsidevstheworld.com and click the pre-order tab to take you directly to the Kickstarter. I have no financial interest there. I just really want to see this film succeed. We should all want to see this film succeed. Support for this episode of the PowerCast comes from Movement Watches. Go to mvmt.com slash PowerCast for 15% off your entire order plus free shipping. 8-Man Apparel for people who lift heavy weights at 8manstrong.com. Compex Muscle Stim Products at compexusa.com. Use the code POWERCAST and get an additional 28% discount. How much you bench not net, home of Mark Bell's Slingshot. Use the code POWERCAST and get 15% off slingshots and free shipping on orders of 100 bucks or more. And Bodybuilding.com. Bodybuilding.com is the world's largest fitness website and supplement store. Bodybuilding.com has free plans for every level. Visit Bodybuilding.com today to become your best self. Recorded live in West Sacramento, California, this is Mark Bell's PowerCast. Standing just to the left of Jim McDee, here's your host, Mark Bell. All right, so today we're going to be a little unconventional with some of this. We might uh, give a couple people a phone call. One guy that we're going to be talking to today is uh, George Lockhart. George is a former Marine, and he's somebody that works um, with a lot of UFC talent. Um, one in particular, Conor McGregor, who's going to be fighting Floyd Mayweather coming up. And uh, there's just been a lot of a lot of hype surrounding that fight. I'm super excited to see it. Um, it's really unconventional, an MMA guy versus a boxer. Yeah. When things like this have gone down before, uh, they haven't. <laughs> they haven't ended very well. No, and it, it it's a stunt. I mean, no matter how you slice right. it, it's a stunt. One one guy is a boxer, and the right. other guy isn't a boxer. Yeah, and the um, there was a boxer a few years back uh, that uh, that hopped in the MMA world, and he just uh, got eaten alive by uh, Randy Couture. I'm having a hard time placing his name. The people that are watching right now are like, "Come on, why can't <laughs> yeah." Um, I think we've talked about this before, and I think I've looked it up before. It was a very very simple. Uh, uh, double leg takedown um, by Randy Couture, and he just went so low on the guy that there's no way the guy would be able to defend it because being a boxer, that's not anything that he has to. Uh, James Tony. James Tony. That's right. And uh, James Tony was it was an amazing boxer. Um, he had a lot of knockouts. He was a great fighter, but uh, they're di- they're just different worlds. But it's interesting to see them come together this way and. We were talking a little bit off the air, like how risky it is for uh, somebody who's the franchise, uh, Conor McGregor, to take a fight like this. Well, if you think about it with the UFC, like they had a lot behind um, Ronda Rousey, and yeah. there, I mean, there was a lot of of UFC equity behind point. that, and she flamed out like just hitting a yeah. just with a harder opponent. Yeah, I mean, this is a different sport. Yeah, yeah, I mean, how how many uh, major professional sports allow their athletes to play another sport? Yeah, 
Uh, Roy Jones Jr. went in, uh, played uh, in Europe and played basketball. Yeah. He was getting bored of whooping everybody's ass in uh, boxing. Right. Um, you have, obviously, Michael Jordan jumping from basketball to baseball. So, um, and then there are some some stories behind exactly why that happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. there's all kinds of weird stories like, behind Like that. a little gambling problem, maybe? There was all kinds of craziness behind suspension. that. suspension. There's a, actually a... Um, I think it's a 30 for 30 on uh, ESPN of of that time, and it's it's amazing. The uh, the baseball team that he went to uh, went from having like two customer service people. Uh-huh. They had one or two phones, and you know a ticket was ten bucks. You know, minor, it was minor league baseball. I can't remember the team's name. I know that he ended up playing on the White Sox for a little bit, but uh, or at least it was a White Sox minor league team. And uh, I know, like they were, you know, they were talking about um, how the tickets went from like fifteen to like eighty bucks, and how they went from having uh, two or three customer service people to having twelve oh, and fifteen different phone lines and all this different stuff, just absolutely uh, insane. And I, I guess that's kind of McGregor's thought process, and maybe, um, and and maybe Mayweather's too. Like, let's just fucking create some. Let's just make it nuts. Let's just make it crazy. Let's a, bring these two worlds together. A tremendous amount of buzz, and you know what? If in the end it's it's boring or whatever, they'll yeah. they'll still have all that money in their hands. <laughs> yeah, you know, no one's going to take the money away. They're not going to be refunding any tickets or or right. any pay per view. I think from McGregor's standpoint, he might be thinking, "Well, I'm you know, it's a boxing match." Um, so he might be thinking, well, I'm playing somebody else's game. So even if I can land a couple and rough them up a little bit, then maybe that'll be entertaining enough to, you know, to think, to have people think that like, Hey, at least I hung in there. And this is the, one of the greatest boxers of all time. So how long do you think he needs to hang on? To, well, I, for, I, ma- for it to be legitimate. I, d- I don't think that, uh, I don't think Floyd Mayweather possesses the ability to knock him out. Um, at this stage in his career, yeah, or? I just and I just the the only the only thing that could lead to uh, McGregor possibly hitting the canvas would be um, if if he's just not in shape because the this is twelve rounds. If he doesn't take it seriously enough, yeah, this is tw- twelve rounds, uh, you know, and uh, uh, Mayweather's impossible to hit. Um, it's just I don't know. It's, it's it's interesting. I'm excited for. It. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Um, UFC does need a shot in the arm, so to speak, because uh, since it's been sold, they haven't really done anything big. It's been a little while. A lot of the fighters have been suspended or hurt or yeah. this or that, and it's been hard to schedule anything. We do have uh, we have uh, Bones Jones coming back into the mix at the end of July against. Uh, Daniel Cormier, that should be really cool. That's exciting. Um, but uh, you just don't know how these things are going to play out, you know. And right. I think that um, I do think McGregor can land a couple shots, but Mayweather's like he—he he, not only is he undefeated, but he's really never been hit that much. Yeah, it's been one or two guys to get him. Um, I, I think McGregor's going to go in there and try to do some crazy shit and like tackle him and all kinds of stuff to try to fluster him and throw uh-huh. him out of his game. But I, I don't know. <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised to see that. I, don't, I, I, you don't know what's going to work, but you know that whoever is working with him has broken down all the film, yeah, and is looking for where the psychological advantages are and where the physical advantages right. are, and in in the hopes of rattling him enough. I mean, three rounds, four rounds, five <laughs> rounds. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. It, I mean, and and if McGregor, I guess McGregor's thought is if he wins. How epic is that? He it comes from an MMA background, and all of a sudden he beats uh, who a lot of people are considering Floyd Mayweather as one of the greatest fighters of all time. So, what does that do to the boxing establishment? <laughs> I don't, I, mean, I don't it, know. Is, it's is already it all, so sideways. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is it shattered at that point? Do they have to rethink the whole yeah. sport? I mean, I don't know. I, I wonder I wonder if uh, the UFC will pick up more fans from it and stuff. Like, the UFC still has, uh, you know, quote-unquote, a, a black eye a little bit from um, it just being so, like, quote-unquote barbaric. You know, yeah. like, people just, there's still a lot of people that won't accept it as a sport. They're like, that's too much. Like, that's not something I'm going to watch with my girlfriend or my aunt or my son or whatever. They don't call UFC the sweet science. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think that boxing over a long period of time has become more accepted as a sport. Yeah. Uh, MMA hasn't really gotten the credit it deserves. I definitely consider it a sport. We know a lot of people that do it. So right. uh, we know what it takes to to be able to get inside of a cage, and it's unbelievable in my opinion. It's a good – it's a fusion sport. Mm-hmm. You know, a it's hybrid a blend, sport. Yeah. yeah. It's blended a lot of things together. Let's, uh, let's call up our buddy George here. And uh, let's uh, let's see what's going down. He's George Lockhart is uh, working directly with McGregor, and so we will give him a call. Uh, we tried to connect with uh, George. We didn't get him quite yet. We'll get him a little bit. So right now we're going to start talking to uh, our boy Taco Truck, a.k.a. Amadeo Novella, who's a trainer and strength coach, works with a lot of MMA athletes, and uh, we we're going to... We're going to get the lowdown from him on what he thinks about the uh, McGregor Mayweather fight and just also talk to him about MMA training in general. He's somebody that's been on the podcast before. He's trained here at Super Training Gym. He successfully deadlifted 633 pounds. He's also the largest Mexican in the entire world, uh, standing at about six foot seven feet tall and probably about three bills. I don't know what he weighs, but he's a big boy. He's a very big boy, absolutely. Here we go. We're going to try to get him uh, FaceTime audio is what you said is yeah, kind of preferred, yeah. right? So let's see what we can do with that. FaceTime audio. Kapink. Okay, I'm hearing that ring just fine. So. Mm-hmm. Pick it up, Amo. Hello? What's up, Amadeo Novella? What up, what up? You're on the podcast, homie. I hope you're not taking a shit. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. What's going on, awesome. man? I wanted to get uh, some of the lowdown on uh, some upcoming fights and also wanted to talk to you about uh, some of the fighters that you work with and uh, give me the lowdown on what's uh, what's going on over there at your gym. What's going on in my gym? Um, busy. Uh, we have who's up here? A lot, of, a lot of local shows with some smaller guys. The UFC guys have uh, Alex Sandoval's in Mexico. Um, when is that? First weekend of August. You have Andre Feely in Anaheim last weekend in July, I believe. And then uh, we're still rolling with Cody. Yeah, how's Waiting Cody? How's, uh, how's our boy Cody No Love doing? Oh, he's doing great, man. He's, uh, he's, he's looking really good. Everything's coming coming along. Um, looking for a date. Looking for an, uh, an event. And then uh, he'll be ready to rock. Yeah, Cody, uh, he had so. the fight scheduled, and then they rescheduled the fight. Have they uh, decided on a, a new date yet or haven't gotten there yet? No, I don't think they've gotten there. I'm not sure what's going on. I think uh, we're kind of being more reactive to the whole Dillashaw, uh, Mighty Mouse thing. Um, right. What's happening with that? I don't that? really know. I don't. I don't know where that's going. You know, I know uh, Mighty Mouse was uh, pretty set in stone that he didn't. He didn't want to change his fight that that he had already set. Um, who's Mi- who's Mighty Mouse supposed to fight? He, you know, I'm really not sure. It was a tough opponent. Hmm. Kid, a kid from Brazil, I think. Dude, uh, what's up with Mighty Mouse Johnson? He's pretty untouchable. Yeah, he's the man. He's good. He's uh He has he's a, a lot beast. of. Uh, a lot of trainers and um, and coaches and stuff in his corner that you admire. Um, can you talk about that a little bit? Some of the guys he works with up there. Yeah, Joel Joel Jameson is a. Uh, it's kind of like you. He's one of those guys who kind of came along, and put his book out there, and changed the whole industry. Um, how, how you look at, the, how I looked at conditioning. How, how um, I'm, a lot, I'm sure a ton of other people too. Um, yeah, it's a strength and conditioning coach. His other coach, uh, I can picture his face. I'm, his uh, names. He's got Slip Matt. My mind what right is now. He got Matt Humes or whatever is in his corner too. Matt right? Hume. There you go. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. another great coach, um, MMA coach. Yeah, with with the stuff uh, that uh, like someone like Joel Jameson has uh, presented, um, you know, it's really interesting because you think conditioning, like, oh, I'm just gonna like jump rope and I'm gonna like box jump and I'm gonna. How do you implement a lot of that stuff without overdoing it for the fighter? Because a lot of their boxing and a lot of their you know, kickboxing and Muay Thai and their jujitsu and their wrestling and all these different things they have to do in a given day. 
Uh, how do you avoid breaking these guys down? Uh, well, you know, the primary goal is just to keep them healthy. Uh, that's how they're in their living. So, yeah. Um, for me, the biggest thing is finding out where what their biggest weakness is. So, a lot of times, guys will come to you and they might only do hit intervals, or somebody has them just doing a bunch of crazy anaerobic stuff, uh, and they kind of neglect their aerobic um, training. So, then you, you obviously, if you plug that in, then that's going to clean up a lot of that other stuff. Um, learning when and how to implement that in around their training camp. Um, is super important. So with me, usually the guys are always working on aerobic system, which is going to be, for the most part, a lot of their practice. Um, but we'll still touch it in some way, shape, or form. Um, in my yeah. facet of training, uh, it could be used as recovery, or it could be just you know that they're that that's what they're training for that day. Uh, it depends on the person and the, where they're at and with the fights and where they're just at as an athlete as well. What do you do if a fighter has uh, like a deficiency, like a weakness or uh, something they perhaps have to have to rehab? You just kind of shift gears and prioritize towards that type of thing or? Yeah. So um, that's, that's your number one thing is, you know, you have to be healthy. You can't fight if you're not healthy. Mm. Um, so the, it, obviously you just work around that. So there's always going to be something just because somebody has some type of injury or uh, pain going on. There's, there's always something else you can do. There's always fun, things you can do to different tools or methods where you, you can train around what's going on there so that you're still training. Like if someone's got to hurt, you know, um, you know, back, then obviously the focus of the strength training, the movement and all that stuff is going to be, that's going to be the primary focus. But you can still find ways to train your conditioning system, your aerobic system, um, and really just hammer at what you can do. And uh, avoid or put off, you know, what you can't do until that time comes. So, so Cody uh, just had a back injury, right? Yeah, he had a low back thing. And low and, back thing. And, we're not we're not supposed to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. It, it's not a. Uh, it's not a big thing. I mean, we got you. Obviously, it's a big deal. He had a, he had a back of a fight, but it's a. Uh, um, yeah, it's it's it happens. You know, they're in a tough sport. It was, a, it was a training injury, you know. Um, we've dealt with it. It's not. It's not going to stop him in his career or anything like that. He's going to come back even better. He, it's a learning experience, is what it is. How do you, uh, you know, do you incorporate something like a deadlift to try to figure out a way to strengthen the guy's back, or or is there a lot of other types of movements that you're doing uh, to try to, you know, keep his not only uh, have his back uh, recover and rehabilitate, but also to stay it, strong. A lot of it depends on um, the injury itself. So, usually with backs, there's a, there's it's it's different in MMA because it's it's a combat sport. Obviously, there's a lot of hands on um, grappling and all those different right. things. But usually, with with just generally speaking, a lot of people are going to lack stuff, something either from their hips or their just spine's not going to move very well. And then once you kind of figure out where that deficiency is coming from. And that's kind of your target focus. So a lot of times guys will have uh, people who just sit at a desk. That's just the easiest example. They're, 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 uh, they're just the hip flexors are going to lock up and they're not going to be able to um, use their core. They're going to have poor glutes. And so once you fix those things or eliminate um, the issue, then you can kind of work around it with Cody uh, since with, or just with any guys, MMA guys who, who are going to have those type of issues are not usually going to come from a lack of exercise or movement. Um, they're going to come from things like uh, rotating, you know, throwing punches, throwing kicks, gotcha. maybe the volume of it, or they're going to come from um, jujitsu or somebody, somebody, you know, they took them down and they landed wrong. Mm. It's not going to, it's a uh, very rarely is it going to be, like an, an over, overuse issue, or, or I shouldn't say overuse issue. It's right. going to be something from not, you know, from not exercising. Dr. Uh, Stuart McGill, you know, one of the most sought after uh, doctors there is when it comes to lower back injuries and things like that. Um, he's kind of been, he's somebody that uh, has recently been harping on the fact that lower back injuries are oftentimes uh, 
more stamina related. And I think that we tend to think of them uh, like you tweak your back when you try something heavy or you pick something up that's heavy. Uh, but he's kind of pointed out the fact that uh, stamina is a huge factor. So how do you get somebody, how do you condition somebody's lower back, uh, especially if their lower back's already in pain? Well, like Dr. McGill, he's he's probably the foremost expert in spine biomechanics. But um, what he uh, harps on is, is that majority of back problems are going to come from either flexion or extension base, but they're going to come from... Uh, I was just going to say lower backs. The majority of it's going to come from uh, too much flexion. So like things like sit ups, which is which is um, gotcha. Keeping the hips tight. Translate yeah. to to uh, sports, but the, if he his example is that if you take a low back, it's kind of like a credit card. I don't know if he still uses this. This is an old example, but yeah. you know you can bend it and it'll bend and move, and you can flex that lower back, but eventually you'll get that line. And right. Eventually those discs will uh, just start to deteriorate, and then. And then something will happen. Something bad will happen. So it's usually from um, poor movement patterns. So you're rounding your back, which is with MMA, fighting, sparring, or boxing is a flexion. You know, you're in flexion all the time. Right. Just with your stance, wrestling. Um, so if you have too much of that, that's a lot of times where your, your issues are going to come. So he teaches you to rotate through your thoracic spine, learn how to use your hips so that your lower back, actually, there's not a lot of range of movement between those discs. So your lower back's a stabilizer and you're getting your mobility through mm. your hips and your upper back, your thoracic spine. And then, yeah, so um, historically people have trained, the core training is going to be sit-ups, crunches, you know, all those things you see people doing um, still to the, today on the internet. Whereas when you're training for a sport, um, that's not how you're going to train to train your core gotcha. or your trunk or whatever you want to call it. You're, you're, the primary function of your core is going to be to keep your spine upright. And in sport, it's going to be – the function of it is going to be to transfer force from upper or lower extremities to the other. So from – in punching, your the majority of your power is coming from your foot, you know, and it's going into your hand. And your core is what's where that, that power is being uh, transported through. So learning how to have a neutral, stable spine, like you said, and have the endurance to be able to do that over and over and over – with proper movement patterns is, is how you're going to keep healthy. Um, Interesting. In the long run. We're going to, we're going to traditionally, um, boxing and MMA guys are going to do a lot of sit-ups, crunches. You still right, see right. Them, the Floyd May- Mayweather's, uh, videos and all that. Right. Speaking of Floyd Mayweather, we're actually about to, uh, we're going to, in a little bit, we're going to call, uh, George Lockhart, who's working with Conor McGregor in preparation for that Mayweather fight. What do you think of that fight? It's uh, got a lot of a lot of publicity behind it. What are your thoughts on that fight? <laughs> I thought, hey, those guys are going to make some money. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're going mean, to make a lot of fucking his, dough, aren't they? He's he's got a puncher's chance, you know. And people are getting paid. And uh, I think the thing about Mayweather is people realize, or people don't realize, is that he sells his fights. People buy his fights because they want to see him lose. You know, he's the villain. They don't. They don't. They're not paying him. They're not buying the pay per views because they want to watch him knock someone out. Cause so he's a heel. He does. He's the ultimate heel. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just. Uh, he's the best defensive boxer we've probably ever seen. Yeah. You know, we haven't learned to appreciate that as fans. The majority of people haven't learned yeah. to appreciate that about the sport. The sports, MMA, boxing. The whole point of it is to hit and to not be hit. Yeah, he fights uh, with a, that sideways style, which uh, oddly enough was uh, the same style as uh, Diaz in, in some ways, but just a lot faster and a lot better probably. Yeah. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see how uh, it'll pan out. Who do you think w- is going to win? Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you want to go on I record mean, with I, that? Yeah. I, he's, everybody's got a fighter's chance, you know? Mm. You know, the, everybody's one hit away from uh, it all being over, but uh, – you know, obviously, you know, you. If I had to pick somebody, it's, it's going to be the boxer. Right, it's a whole different sport. You know? Yeah, it's a boxing match. Unless Gr- McGregor comes in like Mickey the Pikey from Snatch <laughs> hey, and just. But in, in McGregor's defense, you know, he's done everything he said he's going to do. Yeah, you know, that's why he's earned, he's he's put himself in that position to to have that fight. So, I mean, you can't really take anything away from the guy. You think it's good for MMA? Um, someone's going to make some money. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, do I think it's good for MMA? I don't know. 
I don't know if it, I, we'll see when it's all said and done. I know there's going to, there's always going to be, you know, people trying to bring it down. I think, I don't know why not. Right. Yeah. You know? It's more publicity. I mean, uh, yeah. And the thing you got to realize about the Conor McGregor's and <clears throat> of the world is that, you know, rising waters raises all ships. Right. So all these other guys in the, in the UFC, you know, they're going to fall suit and eventually, you know, they'll, they'll be making some more money too. And, I'm- uh, how many rounds do you think he has to go to to make it seem legit? What do you mean? How how long do you... how long, how long does McGregor have to get oh, in? How deep does he have to get, in, have to get into this fight? He's take a dive. You guys think he's going to take a dive? No, I just early? no. I'm just I'm saying that anything can happen, and um, uh, I don't know. You know, you know he 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 uh, he gets tired, and we've seen that in MMA fights. However, the rounds are a little bit different. The conditioning is going to be different. Boxing's uh, a lot more anaerobic than MMA is more aerobic. So uh, mm. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I, I think I think he'd have to be tired to get knocked out. I think so it's we'll fair to that. say we haven't seen anything like this since we saw Rocky Balboa square off with the Hulkster <laughs> in Rocky Three, and we all know we all remember how that turned out. Yeah, I have no clue how this is going to go, but I mean, I'll, I'm going to watch it though. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, no kidding. I'll buy it. On a totally unrelated note, you have any uh, reaction to the Justine Kish shitting all over herself in the in the octagon? Oh my god, poop story in half. <laughs> Shit happens. Yeah, uh, all over the yeah. place. Yeah, I saw uh, that same night. I don't or the night before, a kid uh, just started puking in the middle of the, the oh in between god. rounds. I saw that. So I mean, I, it's not the first time though. I, I think uh, I think another girl had done it not too long ago. Mm. But yeah, I, I don't remember who it was. But I, it didn't come out though. I, I would hate to be the guys following them. Oh no, kidding! Yeah. All right, bud. We're gonna sign off with you. Give us uh, plug away. Give us your uh, Instagram handle and your gym and all that good stuff. Capital uh, at Capital Strength Performance. I think I'm. Uh, I think I'm still at Amadeo NTS on Twitter. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'm a. You're that's a hustler. All I got for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Yeah. Thank you so much. Catch you later. All right, Mark. Later. On. So I was looking through the movement website, and I realized they have sunglasses. Awesome. Which perfect is, for the summer. Yeah, no kidding. Like I'm a sunglasses guy. I, I, I'm, I'm always willing to spend money on sunglasses because I know I take a good care of them if I do. I'm not going to go outside without some shades on. Yeah, that's for sure. These are not terribly expensive either, though. I think they're you know uh, with the 15 percent discount that you get by going to mvmt.com/powercast. Uh, they're you know seventy five, seventy. Yeah, reasonably it, priced. Those very reasonably priced, and it goes along with the free outdoor tanning that we have here at Super Training exactly. Gym. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and obviously, uh, watches. We both enjoy our movement watches quite a bit. Um, wearing mine right now. Yeah, it really got me back into wearing a watch, for sure. You can get fifteen percent off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmt dot com slash powercast. Uh, very clean design watches and the um the the design on the uh, on the sunglasses is very classic. Yeah, I mean, you're not looking at like just crazy stuff. These are this is you know, and right. just looks classic. Just looks good. Yeah, go to mvmt.com slash powercast and join the movement. Hey now, all right. So we are calling up a bunch of different people on the podcast today, we're talking to a bunch of different uh, athletes and coaches, and we're getting a scoop on. What they think of the uh, Mayweather fight coming up, Mayweather versus Conor McGregor, and uh, the next person we're going to call up is Danny Castillo. Oh, sweet! That's our homie. He's been on the podcast before. Let's give him a ring. Uh, Danny was a UFC fighter for a long time. Recently retired. Now he's coaching, right? Now he's coaching some people. He's... I guess we'll find out. Uh, where the fuck did this thing go? There he is. That FaceTime audio. I feel like we're selling a lot of Apple phones about right now. Mm-hmm. They're selling out. It's over with. What's up, Danny? Hey, what's up? What's going on, my man? Just 
hanging out, man. We're getting on the horn. We're getting on the horn today with a bunch of different people, talking about uh, the McGregor Mayweather fight. We just uh, got off the phone with the Mumbler, aka Taco Truck, aka Amadeo Novella, and uh, <laughs> we're also talking to uh, George Lockhart later today. And uh, we just want to get your thoughts on uh, you know the upcoming fight between uh, McGregor and uh, Mayweather. Yeah, uh, I love both guys. Uh, Lockhart's uh, he did a couple one of a couple of my fights. And, yeah, you know I've been I've been working with Coach Whispers my whole career. But um, <laughs> what did uh what uh, what did you do with Lockhart? I know like he does a lot of like weight management and stuff like going into the fights and stuff. But does he do a lot of other types of coaching as well? No, he just basically did my whole my whole weight cut. So it it was pretty awesome. Uh, as soon as I got. I think it was a fight in Vegas. As soon as I got to Vegas, he came out and saw me. We checked my weight. He gave me a bunch of different things, a bunch of different tools to stay light. Uh, he gave me some dieters tea. He gave and he fed me every single meal. Mm. He was constantly putting food in my belly the whole time I was cutting weight and in between workouts and uh, getting ready to see so like uh, fight. cook for you and stuff too. Yeah, all that stuff was taken care of, man. It was it was one of the easiest weight cuts I've had because uh, he was so on point. Everything that he was doing, the water, everything was perfect. That makes a lot of sense because the uh, the hardest part, I would imagine, is the mental side of it. So he's there, like, even if you got to stuff yourself in the sauna and shit like that, is he there for all that, too? Yeah, but, uh, I mean, he's so on point with everything. Like, uh, we, I didn't even really do any saunas. We did you just don't need hot it, baths. See. Yeah, and he knew exactly. We were doing hot baths before, but we were putting them super hot and he basically told us like your core temperature your body core just needs to be i think it was like nine uh, like 90 something degrees he knew exactly how much it was so you weren't in the bathtub suffering because the water was so hot so he keeps you strong when you go into your fight huh yeah he's a man he's he's the best in the game right now there's no one better than him it's uh i know for a long time there was uh, dolce mike dolce but for in my opinion he's the best yeah yeah, I know he's working with Connor right now. He's uh, you know, work he's in Ireland right now and they're working together. And he's working on honing in that weight right now. What what do you think of that fight coming up? Um and I I just I don't I don't see how he, I don't see how McGregor can win. Yeah. Um I, I I really don't. It's just two different types of striking. Uh, Mayweather's the best of all times. I mean, in, in my opinion, he's the GOAT. You know, there's Muhammad Ali. People talk about that stuff. Right. Like uh, Rocky Marciano. Um, Rocky Marciano. <laughs> just to name a few. But uh, in, in my in my opinion, man, he's he's the best. He's the most technical. He's the fastest. And I don't think he's I don't think he's gonna. I don't think he's he might have slowed down a little bit, but in my opinion, he's so much faster than anyone. Um, well, I think Cody. If anyone had a shot at beating him, it'd probably be Cody Garbrandt. Hmm. Um, because yeah, Cody, boxing, yeah, Cody does have a lot of boxing background, huh? Yeah, amateur boxing. He, I mean, he started off boxing, and and in boxing, you have to have you have to have a jab. And right. If you watch McGregor striking, he has no jab, and the jab is everything in boxing. Yeah. Um. I. Yeah. I. I. He. I, in my opinion, Mayweather could just beat him with the jab. The jab, check hooks, pulling. You think Mayweather would be able to knock him down or knock him out? I think, I mean, he has potential to in the later rounds. I mean, he's not really a big puncher, right? But uh, you know, the 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 um, the punch the punch counts. You know, every it'll time you get up. hit with the jab, it'll add up. It'll add up. It'll wear down, and eventually, he mixes his strikes up to the body as well. So, I think eventually he has a chance of putting him down. But in the first round, I I'd be surprised if he if he if he dropped him. I think he's winning for sure. If you're before. in your training for MMA, have you gotten in the ring and just had some headgear on and just done some straight boxing where there's no kicks and no anything else? Oh yeah, um, at Alpha Male we would do uh, three days MMA MMA sparring and then one day boxing sparring. And right now we actually do two days boxing sparring right now. And when you um, when you get in the ring with somebody like Cody, like what what does that what does that look like when you if you guys box each other? So when when Cody came in, he was already, I was already pretty much close to retiring. Mm. But uh, there's another, uh, yeah, you might want to contact him. There's a, another pro boxer in Sacramento mm. named Brandon Gonzalez. He's probably 
one of the biggest prospects to come out of Bo- um, Sacramento in quite some time. Oh, wow. Cool. And just sparring with that guy. He owns uh, Flawless Boxing uh, mm. off of Broadway. And uh, just working with him, man, he's, he worked with uh, uh, Virgil. He worked with um, uh, what the hell? Uh, Andre Ward's coach uh, right. for a really long time. So he's super sharp. He had a ton of uh, amateur boxing experience on the national level. Um, and just sparring with him, it's just a different, it's just a different type. So you think Mayweather's going to win? There's no questions asked pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see, I don't see Mayweather. Um, McGregor has really long strikes, which everyone's saying that, uh, that the reach is going to come into effect. But the thing with, uh, uh, McGregor, if you watch his fights, he leaves his punches out there. Um, yeah. too long it's almost like he's admiring his work after he throws um you know a power shot just kind of yeah. leaves it out there a little bit and and in my opinion i think mayweather's going to be able to counter with three strikes before he can even bring his hand back that makes sense that's interesting it sounds like uh <laughs> like he he's hitting a home run and he's admiring it is what yeah it's like he's doing a bat flip bat flip <laughs> but but the bad flip on this one is going to be, you know, a three punch combination from one of the best boxers of all time. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be he's got a tough task at hand. But I mean, for the money, I would do it with no head. I would do it with no mouthpiece. <laughs> how is your uh, how is your transition going? Um, that's got to be tough. You uh, have recently retired. And uh, are you still training the same way? You still getting in there and doing standard MMA stuff? Are you still getting in there with everybody else? Not quite. I'm like really retired, so I go in there and watch and yell. And that's basically the yeah. extent of it. But uh, I, it's not too bad for me because we have so many guys in the UFC, and um, you know, I was in the, I, I was with the company for so long. I had 22 types of fights with the company, so wow. whenever I go to a fight week, um, you know, I see the same people. Even though they sold the company and there's new staff and the, right. there's new people every time, it's not the same thing. But, uh, you know, I'm walking out there with Cody. I'm walking out there with yeah, that's Andre cool. Feely. I'm walk- so right when we get to the cage, I get those, like, those nerves again. And then <laughs> right when they get in there and shut the door, I see one punch. And I'm just like, ah. You know, I was just talking about it with Uriah today. And Uriah's like, he looked at me because we had some hard sparring today. We got a bunch of fights. We got uh, four UFC fights uh, in the next four weeks. Hmm. So Darren Elkin, Cynthia Cavello. Uh, Andre Feely, uh, Alex, and then we have a debuter, and those are all coming up super fast. Seems like the gym so, just keeps getting better and better, man. Yeah, the uh, crazy the intensity in that room is super high right now, and the in the sparring, you know, people are getting people are getting messed up at sparring right now. So, uh, I love it. That's so when, great. I, when you see that, you're right. I just looked at me. He's like, man, I don't miss this at all. <laughs> either, either do I. Either do I. <laughs> Yeah, it's very uh, very painful. So, how has your training been though? Like, uh, are you able to just go in there and like, uh, in terms of like weightlifting or traditional workouts, you able just to have more fun because there's nothing like there's not a fight planned out. Yeah, and and that's when I kind of knew that uh, that it was time for me to to hang it up because it just wasn't fun anymore. Yeah, you know, going in there and and having to condition and those air down bikes and <laughs> just 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 miserable you know and uh right now I, I go in there you know i i got the pilates studio so I'll, I'll do some pilates every once in a while but i'll head to amadeo's gym and and right now is the, is the first time in my life that i'm able to eat as much as i can and lift as heavy as i can so um it's a lot better this way but uh i've, I've lost a lot of mobility from uh doing the heavy deads and heavy squats right but uh you know we hear that yeah yeah Yeah. so it's fun i'm really enjoying myself and and i i believe that uh that that my career was uh well i had my career to be a better coach because i've been in situations you know i've I've fought big fights you know i i've 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 been knocked out so there's nothing these guys you know can tell me you know oh you have a you have a problem with your girlfriend right before a fight a tough shit i've fucking dealt with that you know <laughs> right. oh, you, got, you got knocked out um on tv oh tough shit that happened to me three times <laughs> you can't cry and tell me anything you just can't because i've already been through it so right. i think the guys knowing that um it builds a little bit more confidence in them going into the fight because they know that i've already experienced that stuff and the things that are telling them are um you know are are, are, are legit 
the MMA is changing. It's such a new sport yeah. and uh, it's ever evolving. And right now is the time where, you know, the one, one, uh, one disciplined coaching is just not going to be there. If you haven't fought, you know, how can you tell a kid to do something if you've never done it? All right. You know, so I've done everything, you know, so they can't tell me that it's not going to work because I'll just pull up one of my fights and well, it worked right there. How are you going to tell me? Right. Well, and, and the perspective that you have right now is, is a really healthy one because uh, it's not over. It's actually just getting started. Like you have a whole nother half of your uh, career is just getting started. And it started the day that you retired, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and, and, and the cool thing about it is I feel like when I retired, I lost a little bit of ego. And when I became a coach, I lost even more of an ego because I don't know everything. And I'm yeah. not afraid to, to tell anyone that I don't. In fact, there's fighters in there where I'm like, oh, what do you use here? That looks great. You know, I'll tell the room, let's try this. If it's working for him, it might work for us. So techniques work for different fighters. You know, I don't, I don't know everything. But, uh, you know, I've been around a long time where I've worked with some of the best in the world. Um so I kind of know a little bit of what I'm talking about. Yeah, when it comes to coaching, I think a, a huge mistake that most coaches make is uh, not understanding that the information they're about to give out to somebody could be 100% wrong for that person. And you have to just accept that fact, and then you have to go, oh, shit, well, I told you to move your foot this way. Actually, maybe for you it's better if you move this way because everybody's body is so different, right? Right, that's correct. All right, my man. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate uh, you spending some time with us today. And uh, don't be a stranger. Come over here to Super Training Gym and hit up some uh, heavy squats and deadlifts with us. No, anytime, man. I need to get out there and work out and uh, get some squats, some some more technique out of there. I mean, if anything. Um, but uh, I, had, I enjoyed myself last time I was over there. So um, I'll, I'll hit you up. All right, man. Where can people find you on the internet? Um. It's last call one fifty five on Twitter and Instagram. Um, that's pretty much what I'm doing right now. I got a Facebook fan page also, and it's the same thing. All right, last call. Awesome. Catch you later, buddy. All right, Mark. Appreciate you. you, man. Bye. Thanks, Danny. Sweet. Yeah. So he just he just doesn't think there's a fucking chance in hell. He does not see a chance. Amadeo no. thinks there's maybe some sort of possibility that might uh, he might just throw up a hail mary and knock uh, Mayweather on his ass. I, I, I do think that I can see him uh, getting desperate in the fight and trying to, uh, you know, headbutt or, you know, maybe chew his ear off, mm-hmm. go all... <laughs> if and go, go Tyson on him. Go all Mike Tyson on him. Yeah, I saw that interview with Tyson, and Tyson was kind of the, of the same mindset where he was like, you know what, like, there's just there's just no chance. Can we play that? Uh, let me see. Where's the video version here? Mike Tyson says Conor McGregor would look ridiculous actually boxing Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> oh, there's maybe a clip of it right there. Yeah, okay, I'll try this one. Oscar De La Hoya is talking about the Floyd Mayweather Conor McGregor fight and how it could ruin boxing. Do you agree with that? No, I don't believe it could ruin boxing at all. The only way it could ruin boxing is McGregor goes and box Floyd because he's going to look really ridiculous boxing. But if he goes in there with the UFC stuff now, this could be pretty interesting. Well, I mean, obviously they're going to have gloves on. There's no wrestling. There's no takedowns. It's just going to be boxing. And that's the unfortunate part because I think the, the world thinks that Conor McGregor's got a shot with Floyd Mayweather, but uh, in the boxing ring, he doesn't. Do you, do you agree with that? He doesn't want in the boxing match. But people will pay for it anyway, you think? Hey, if people pay for anything. <laughs> <laughs> I love Mike Tyson. He's so brilliant. He's so simple. How's that? He went on to say in this other interview I was watching, uh, maybe it was the same, maybe it just went on a little further, but he basically just said, "Be just, there's just no shot, there's no, there's just no chance." Thirty-five it's, seconds is one of one of the things he said. Yeah, he's just like, it's just not gonna, it's but it's not gonna happen. But do we? I mean, is he saying he thinks that Mayweather's gonna knock him out? I think most people don't really think there's gonna be a knockout just because, like, uh, they think they can, he can hang in there. But twelve rounds is a really long time. 12 times 3 seems like a lot of fighting. And if it goes like 10, 12 rounds, it seems like a long, a long battle. Connor is not skilled enough to box. So what basically he was saying is that if, if it was an MMA fight or if McGregor could use MMA tactics, yeah. then it might be an interesting fight. But 
obviously, if it was MMA, I I think the, the everything would be flipped. I don't think McGregor would stand a chance. Um, you know, I, I think what people don't understand when you do something uh, frequently, um, something like fighting. Uh, th- this has been brought up in the past. You know, talking about like Team Alpha Male, how small some of the athletes are over there. Uriah Faber, you know, fighting at 140, 130 pounds. Yeah. I I I am a uh, smart enough to understand that in in uh if he and i were in a cage together he would fucking kill me because i don't i don't do that you know like right. if i trained for it then hopefully uh with some of my strength and some different things i'd be able to uh do something to him so i don't look to get too embarrassed but honestly uh, his strength when it comes to wrestling, that's Uriah Faber's main background. His strength when it comes to wrestling is way stronger than anything that I can make up. I yeah. can't, you know, like I might be able to try to be like a barbarian and try to fucking like run him over. Um, but the strength you saw possessed by somebody like Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar not only, you know, was a professional wrestler, he was an amateur wrestler for years and years and years and, and really high level. He was a national champion. So when he went to UFC, it, he was able to do really well. He was UFC heavyweight champion of the world for a little bit there. But I just don't think that people understand that when somebody does something like that for a living and they do it well, mm-hmm. uh, your odds of being able to do anything to them is really significantly uh, decrease. Jiu-jitsu is a great example. If you were to um, grapple with somebody and you didn't have any experience in jiu-jitsu, and even if they... Uh, we're only doing it for several months. They're going to tap you out every every couple of minutes, left right. and right. And if they're skilled, then you're really dead. And you have no idea how strong the, these people are. So strong, it's actually pretty scary. Uh, going down and uh, doing some stuff with uh, Jason Kalipa recently. I got on the mat with his coach uh-huh. and. His coach is just showing me stuff, and he's like, oh, yeah, you would kind of apply it like this. And I just felt like a probably maybe a tenth of his strength, and I was like, holy shit. Like, if he did anything further than that, he could, like, just rip my arm, like, off. Like, it felt insane. And the guy's, he's probably 6'2 or 6'3. He's probably 170. <laughs> very thin guy you'd be like this guy's a fucking pussy i'm gonna knock this guy out and then you would get your arm handed back to you it well, wouldn't be attached that, to your body anymore something that jason said when he was here was getting into it like he needed basically needed somebody to let everybody know that he was brand new <laughs> and and not to kill him because uh because they're he said some guys they feel your strength yeah. and so they they equate that strength with skill right. and so they're going to come at you, you know, guns blazing and they're not going to treat you like you're the rank amateur that you are, you know? There's a lot of tactics too from one sport to another. There's there's so much strategy. Uh, You you really love baseball a lot and a lot of people that, uh, even people that frequently watch baseball, they don't really understand uh, how much strategy there is of a certain pitcher pitching a certain way to a certain guy in the lineup due to the fact that there's a, a, a certain type of individual on second base that might steal third. I mean, like, there's so many scenarios that, that come into play, and they might pitch a certain way to a certain guy knowing that somebody else is in the lineup that might get up uh, two batters later. Like, for example, they just they just walk a guy sometimes. Right, yeah. Like, it doesn't make any sense to even pitch to this guy. We're just going to walk him. And then they handle the next guy, and they they do. And you're like, well, why would they do that? But it's there's a strategy within every sport, and I think that Mayweather, in this uh, example, is going to be able to just make McGregor look like a clown. He's going to be able to probably make him look really, really tired, mm-hmm. because the stuff they do and the little tricks and things they do in boxing are still different even though mcgregor is very skilled uh with his hands he's unbelievable oh here we go here's a call from my buddy george what's up george hey what's up man sorry dude just uh just got done cooking and cleaning and feeding everybody so yeah cool i'm uh <laughs> you, you're a busy man <laughs> We just uh, we just got off the phone a minute ago with uh, Danny Castillo, and he had uh, nothing but good things to say. He said, "You're the man. That you're the best in the business." 
Oh, man, that's nice. I got to make sure I give him the 20 bucks. I <laughs> that's really cool. So what are you, what are you doing yeah. out there in Ireland? Uh, we're, uh, so working with, uh, with Connor for this Mayweather fight, man, we have a, uh, the company's crazy busy. We got one guy working with, uh, he's with, uh, Daniel Cormier for the Jones fight, wow. um, for six weeks. And then I uh, got my partner working with, um, with, uh, with somebody we can't even say the name. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, man. So it's, uh, that's cool. That's it. Yeah, it's nuts, man. So it, it's good though, man. Me and, uh, me and my fiance, we love, love Ireland. So every time we cool. come out here, it's, uh, it's a blast, man. How do you how do you work with these uh, individuals? Like in the case of Conor McGregor, uh, I'd imagine he has uh, several other coaches. So how how does that work out? Uh, do you guys all just kind of stay out of each other's way, or do you communicate a lot? You know, with with, uh, with Conor's crew, it's it's very very. Uh, you know, it, we literally like uh, Coach Kavanaugh. Like today, we literally just brought everybody together and like, okay, this is the game plan. Um, this is this, you know, just in just terms of weight, you know what I mean? So everybody's on the, on the same, uh, everybody's on the same page. It's like, okay, this is where we are. This is where we want to go. Mm. Uh, communication in the team is ridiculous. It is. I mean, oh, that's probably cool. one of the best I've ever, ever seen. Yeah, man. Everybody's so, you know, <laughs> they're there for the, the, the right reasons, for the purpose, you know, they just, everybody's on time, right. ready to rock and roll. And, you know, so it's a great environment. Are you uh, involved in his actual training and stuff too? Or are you kind of watching him train uh, along with you? You said uh, just a little bit ago that you just cooked for him. Are you kind of with him the whole day? Yeah, yeah man. I actually I, I spend a, a, a pretty large percentage of the day with him. Um, if I'm not at his house, you know, you know where I'm going over to his uh, training, which which was awesome, man. You know, you sit there and uh, you know he got this he got this ring. And his room is just guys got like ten guys in it, you know what I mean? And right. Sitting there like, holy crap! Like, I get to sit here and watch, <laughs> you know what I mean? This training session that for the biggest, literally, this is gonna be. I mean, it's not a guess, right? It's like the biggest fight in history. It's, it's yeah, no, it, it literally, it's huge. it literally is the biggest fight in history, and it will. Uh, it'll go down as one of one of the biggest ones ever. It's it's pretty crazy. Let's just back up for a second here and let's talk uh, about how you got in the, into this position because uh, it's kind of my understanding that uh, you have a military background. You're in the Marines, and uh, again, it's just my my brief understanding of how things went down. But uh, a lot of uh, military personnel get super dehydrated, and uh, this is sort of where you learn some of this. Uh, some of this base for being able to help these fighters uh, with nutrition and being to help these fighters uh, uh, cut weight for fights and get rehydrated and stuff. Is that correct? Yeah. You know, it, uh, it's funny, man. Cause uh, I was, uh, I was actually stationed in Quantico, Virginia, the second part of my career. We, I used to work at a place called the martial arts center of excellence. And basically like the, the, you know, the, the, the pub of, of martial arts, physical training, physical fitness, and, uh, you know, I was uh, I was a fighter before I joined the Marine Corps, so I you know I learned a lot about nutrition. And um, it's funny when I got there, I started helping a few people out, and, and uh, this guy that was in charge, his name was uh, Colonel Shishko. He's like, let's get you schooled up, and let's let's really you know work on this. There's something called the Combat Conditioning Program. Um, so I got to go to symposiums, seminars, schools. Uh, you know, like we got TSAC trained from the Olympic uh, Training Center, like. It was really cool to see everybody's not only not only nutrition, but see what everybody's uh, perspective was. Right. And the cool thing is, is that I never never thought it would translate into anything else because you got the Marine Corps, you have a weight standard, and then you have a performance standard. So, like, even if you make weight and you can't um, physically do the, the like the PFT, the physical fitness test, then you, you're done, you fail. And it's funny because you know you look at a fight, it's like you got someone that makes weight. Um, but they, they can't fight, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Or if you got someone that can fight but can't make weight, um, it really did. It translated over. And then when the IV band came into play, man, that was, uh, that was nuts because, you know, in the Marine Corps, it's like, this is this something that we have to really learn. It's like, okay, if someone goes down with huge shots and someone goes, you know, like, you know, um, but this is super dehydrated. What do you do to get them back in the fight? So a lot of the training did, you know, translate over and, uh, you know, it's cool, you know, hanging out with those type of people, kind of like band of brothers, the same thing. So when I got out, man, it was like easy transition. The, uh, 
the UFC, uh, you know, as of a year or so ago, they uh, they ditched the IV bag stuff. So um, did that make things easier or harder for you? Um, honestly, I, I uh, so, you know, Brian Stan, he was, he was the first guy that I started really working with in the UFC, mainly because we, we were in the Marine Corps together and, uh, you know, he knew what I was doing and, uh, you know, in the Marine Corps, he, he actually started off at the Marshall Center of Excellence. Um, but, you know, I was like, you know, he's he's having kind of a bad run at 205 and I'm like, man, you know, <laughs> I don't give him shit because he's got the smallest arms, like, like reach, he's got like T-Rex arms, you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, you know, he's got a big old head and little arms, just like a T-Rex. But so I'm like, dude, you know, you need to go to 185. You know, you got to go. You know, you got to go 185. So he, you know, he's like, well, you know, he helped me out. So, you know, basically went out there, helped him out. And it, you know, the crazy thing, Dan, is that uh, it was uh, the second fight we were out there, and he's like, hey man, I got this, I got this teammate. Um, he could use your help. And he's like, you mind? And I'm like, oh hell no, man. Of course, you know, any friend of yours, friend of mine. So he watched me over, I have no idea, and uh, he's like, hey, man, this is, this is John Jones, um, you know, this is George Rocker. So that's how I got to meet John Jones. So I helped him out with that cut against the uh, uh, the janitor. But, uh, right. you know, after that, man, it's just, dude, it's all real. Like, we have, uh, we have close to 100 fighters that, that, that we work with now uh, just in the UFC alone. From, you know, um, you know, from, a, business, from a business perspective, uh, before you got into some of this, uh, was there a time where you were like thinking, I'm not sure what I'm going to do type of deal or, or is that immediate because you had the fighting background and you learned some of this stuff in the military and stuff, uh, was it just a quick transition or was there a period of time where you're like, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. And then this whole thing took off. Right. Well, there was the, uh, <laughs> uh, reality kind of set in, um, you know, being, being a Marine, being a fighter, I got out and all I, you know, one of the, there's two reasons I got out of the Marine Corps. You know, I was in for 10. And one reason is because the Marine Corps would not allow me into the show called the ultimate fighter. Like, um, they accepted me twice. They said, all you have to do is show up you be on the show. And Marine Corps was like, no, you know, and, and you know, I fought it and stuff like that. And I was like, man, I'm going to be the next champion and blah, 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 blah. You know, <laughs> right. I was like, uh, well, what's that word we look for is that naive. Right. Right. <laughs> but, right. Uh, you know, but, uh, so I got out, but, but I had my son and, you know, my unit, like we deployed every six months, man. And there's just no way in God's green earth I was going to leave him. So oh, I see. I got out and, um, yeah, man, at the time, like the family, I was like, dude, I'm going to go into like, let's go to SWAT. And let's go, you know, she's like, hell no, you're going to get out and do the same damn thing out of the rink that you're doing in. So <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> So I was like, you know what, man? I'm gonna start. You know, so I started doing nutrition, and man, it just, it just, just freaking took off. And word of mouth, like to this day, we still don't do any marketing. We don't put any money into marketing, and um, man, it's, it's nuts. Like we, uh, you know, we just partnered up with uh, Jenny J. Uh, Jenny J. Well, I don't know if you guys ever watched like, the Jersey Shore, but hmm. man, she like transitioned her body, just had a kid, and you know. It's, so you help people nuts. with all kinds of stuff. You help people uh, manage their manipulate their uh, physique and body fat and stuff like that as well? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's actually, you know, honestly, that's that's where a majority of our, our clients uh, come from. That's that's what we're here for. We're, mm -hmm. When you're in the MMA community and, and, like, the athlete community, that's what we're known as. And that's where everybody thinks that our income comes from. But the truth is, is we're the, the people that we work with, like, are the people that are like, man, I need to lose, like, 100 pounds. So we literally fly out wow. to their house cook, train them, like do everything, show them, just, just basically show them how to, how to live the life they need to, to, to have the physique and health that they need. I think that's really cool that you're actually cooking the meals. Danny mentioned that as well. And, uh, that's just that, that little extra step further, or actually it's a pretty big step further, yeah. um, than somebody just ordering some prepped meals and stuff like that. Um, why do you feel that's so important? Man, it, uh, you know, one thing like my my partner Dan Lee, he um, he is a phenomenal chef, and me being a meathead, like I used to eat MREs and be like, this is the best food I've ever eaten in my life, you know. <laughs> I didn't have any taste buds, dude. Like it was ridiculous. You have a fucking I mean, protein bar, and you're just loving it, right? <laughs> Bro, uh, I, I have never been introduced to a protein bar I did not like. I'm like, this is <laughs> this is the greatest thing ever, and uh. So, you know, he starts cooking and like, I'm, I'm working with fighters and he starts working with uh, Daniel Cormier and, 
new Glock holes and all these guys. And I start seeing like these pictures and these dishes. And I'm like, what, what the hell is that? Like, oh my God, like this food looks so nice that I didn't, I, I mean, I wouldn't even want to eat it. You know what I mean? The presentation. So, you know, being competitive, we're, you know, like we're, we're going at it. And the thing is like, you know, he, he's, he's an amazing chef. Like he's, he's phenomenal. We actually have a couple guys that are, you know, they've been chefs like 30 years on our team and, and man, it, it's just, it's just awesome. I love, like, I love cooking, but the thing is, is like, if I prep something and then I put it in the fridge and then I, you know, reheat all this stuff, it's, it's not as good. It doesn't taste as good. It, you know, you know, we can go in and be like, you lose vitamins if you re-steam and read it. You know, like, it, it, it's, it's so, uh, negligible in right. the long term. But when you have, you know, like, when you have somebody in the kitchen and you're just sitting there, like, people are excited. Like, when we're training them, yeah, and you know how it is. Like, you know, I'm talking to you, it kind of, it, it doesn't really, you know, resonate because if I'm like, hey, Mark, let's go to the gym. <laughs> You'd be like, all right, bro, I'm going to show you what's up. You know what I mean? <laughs> but a, a lot of these people, are, they're, they're, they're so, like, I'm not lying, man, they're scared. Like, I've, I've had right. so many people, they they cry when we get in the gym. Just, I'm not even doing anything. You make you think that I was like, whooping them and stuff. No, like they're just going in there because they're so uncomfortable, like looking in the mirror, w- whatever. That makes uh, sense. Uh, you, you know, you well, open somebody up, right? You expose somebody. So like if you sat somebody down and, and you talked about different things they had in their childhood or you talked to them about uh, maybe they had a drug, drug abuse or alcohol, uh, a lot of people are going to be uh, crying about stuff like that yeah. too because it's evoking – uh, emotions that that they're attached to that they don't probably feel that great about, and I guess this would be the same thing. It, maybe the person feels like at some point in their life they they given up on themselves, or or even just like, holy shit, this is really hard. And when something's that difficult, sometimes it's pretty scary too. That's probably a big a big part of it. Um, what are you doing with so you're when you talked about, you know, cooking for these people and stuff, you're actually, uh, do you live with these people? Like, uh, some of the people you said, uh, you helped lose a hundred pounds, help them lose a hundred pounds. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what will happen is, um, they'll, you know, a lot of people will either have like a, a separate house, like Connor has like literally like a separate house. You right, know what right. I mean? So like, here you go. <laughs> uh, what other people, you know, like, uh, when I, you know, That's first start with, uh, with the, like, let's say the fighters, man, you just stay in the, I'll crash in the hotel room with them. You know what right. I mean? Um, I'll crash in somebody's house with them. You know, it, it, it doesn't really matter. And, you know, obviously like time constraints kind of have come up as we, as we've grown, but, um, you know, we still try and get to as many people as possible. We're kind of in that position where we're trying to get new people, hire new people. And, but, um, do you, yeah, uh, man, do you like uh, initially go, go to someone's house for like a couple days and, and show them everything they need to know and then you leave or are you there for like a certain period of time or how's it work? Typically uh, I'm looking and like when I say I like a life change, we, I'm looking at about four months um, that we stay there. Yeah, man. It, it's insane. We, uh, my, my partner, like my partner was staying up to a, a year, like he's got a year contract, but, um, we talk about like a life change, man. It's just, it's so, like I said, you know, these people are so uncomfortable, you know, I always, I always tell people, you know, like when I go to them, I'm like uncomfortability creates desire and desire creates change. So when you feel uncomfortable, <laughs> just know that that's, that's when the greatest amount of change is taking place, you know, cause I, uh, they, they, I'm like, it's just guaranteed because it's the same thing over and over again. They're going to hate me. Like they're going to, they literally, they hate me, but, the one thing that they do love, and this is why I love cooking so much, Mark, is that no matter what, we get back from the gym or wherever, they sit down in a chair and you bring them this bomb dinner or bomb breakfast or right. whatever. You know, every, everything just kind of fades away. They're like, oh, man, I live meal to meal to meal. And that's literally like the happiness that, uh, <laughs> that they live through each day until, until they start creating those new habits. Yeah, create new habits and also uh, breaking down some uh, barriers, you know, like uh, I don't know what to eat and I don't know how to cook. And it's like, okay, well, I'm going to fucking do it for you for a while. And then you're going to kind of see like your food uh, not only is good for you, um, but it it can also taste really good. I think a a really interesting point is that when you start to train hard and and the further down the rabbit hole you go, it seems to me like it's – I don't know about for, I don't know how everybody else works, but for me, 
when I train hard and I go in and I bust my ass, like I'm kind of craving steak and rice and potatoes. And obviously like, you know, I like ice cream and pizza and those things too. Um, but I'm not craving that on a daily basis when I'm trying to put so much into fitness and to strength training. So to me, it's like, uh, you know, the more, the more that you do, the more that you can handle. And after a period of time, it starts to get a little bit easier. What do oh, you, what are you doing? hundred percent. What are you doing, uh, particularly with, uh, with Connor, you're trying to keep his weight up, trying to keep, trying to get his weight down. You're trying to do anything in particular with his body weight right now. Right. You know, like not to be too specific, you know, like I can be general with all the fighters and go over like all the science and stuff like that. But, you know, typically like with that, within the main man, the, uh, the bigger you are, the, the health, more helpful it is, you know, obviously to a certain extent. So, you know, a lot of MMA fighters, they cut a lot of weight. Reason being is if I cut and I do it the correct way and I reload myself the correct way and I walk into the cage 20 pounds heavier than you, that's a huge advantage, man. Right. It's huge because, you know, you're clinching on, you know, wrestling, all these things, they, they come into play. But with boxing, you know, the number one thing in boxing is speed. That's the speed kills. And <laughs> you could be 20 pounds heavier, but if you can't hit somebody, right. um, it, it, it's not it's not really going to help you out a lot. And that's why you know, a lot of people are like, George, you get into the boxing world, you know, that's, that's, that's big money. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> boxers don't really cut weight, man. Right, <laughs> they, right. They, they really just walk in and make weight. So, yeah, yes. with Connor, we just clean everything up. My number one thing with him is performance, man. You know, and the cool thing about he's such a workhorse that, <laughs> if he just eats like perfectly, like an estimate, because he always eats, he always eats right. He always eats healthy. The guy doesn't bend or anything, but you know, just feeding him the right stuff at the right time, the time and everything else, it, 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 it'll, it'll be a walk in the park. So to like tune somebody up for a fight like this, you're saying speed is the main thing. So we, I'd imagine he'll lose a little bit of weight in the course of the training uh, cycle. Are you doing anything with calories in particular or, um, do you weigh stuff, portion stuff out? You, you do anything like that or, or you just cook? You know, the, the, the closer we get to a fight, the more drastic the cut is. Like our science is based off of time, type, portion size, and hormonal responses to food. So given on what the activity is that day and, you know, what, like, let's say, you know, if he's working out, um, based on the type of workout, you know, we use, you know, just basic stuff like the, the metabolic equivalent. We'll find out. Okay, this amount of calories that he burned. Now, depending on the the intensity of the workout, is going to dictate the amount of those calories that's going to be carbs or you know protein or you know if it's fat. Like obviously, we don't want to reload fat. You know, we want to right. reload carbs. We don't want to reload fat. Um, and that's going to dictate okay post workout. So that's, and that's one thing that I noticed with you know. And again, it's all it's all relative to who you're talking to because. You know, if you talk to the average person who, you know, is like struggling to go work out and you're just like, dude, you need to have something post-workout. You know, right. what they have post-workout really doesn't have to be perfect. Um, with somebody that's literally fighting, you know, the, the best boxer uh, of our day, right. um, that, those inches, they matter. So it's like, okay, this is exactly how many grams of carbs that we need to replenish based on the amount of calories that you burn based on the amount of you know, the intensity of, uh, of the, of the actual workout and the duration of the workout. Um, and it's crazy because, you know, one of the things that we do do a lot is we, we have a lot of fat. Like honestly, man, like when you talk to most people, um, they'll, they'll be like, you ask them how many cars they had in a given day. And they'll tell you not only the amount of cars, but the type of cars and shit right. like that. And it's like, bam, 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 bam. And, uh, then you ask him, like, well, well, how much fat, what type of fats have you had? And they look at you like you got something going out of your forehead. You know what I mean? Right. right. Um, <laughs> and I was, you know, I was tell people, I'm like, dude, fat is your body's primary source of fuel when you're in an aerobic state. It's your primary source of fuel. It's not your first source, but it's your primary source. And uh, right. you know, people kind of like, what? wait, wait, wait a minute. And, um, you know, that's, if it's my primary source of fuel, you know, I really want to take a look at, um, what type of fat I'm putting in my body. And uh, that's, that's something we, we also look at, man, like the omega-6 to omega-3 ratios to make sure inflammation is down, but, you know, organs, hair, and everything else is working optimally with the omega-6. You must do sure uh, quite a bit of blood quite a bit of blood work and stuff as well, huh? 
do with a lot of with a lot of fires. Like when we go out to uh, we go out to the people's houses. Uh, we get hormone uh, like a hormone panel. We get blood work, everything done cool. uh, to kind of see where they're at. And um, you know, it's funny. You would think like with fires and stuff like that. Um, I get a lot um, with Connor that that problem might be the case. But I, I'm telling you, like, <laughs> we we worked together for two years now, and you know, it's basically the same thing over and over again. You know. What's uh What's his mindset like? Like, what makes uh What makes Conor McGregor Conor McGregor? Yeah, I think he just he hit the nail on the head. His mindset. That's that's. I mean, that's it's it's so funny, man. It's kind of like it's one of those things. And I know you know doing what you do, you totally understand that. Like, you get under some weight and you don't believe that you can lift it. You know, it, there's no way on God's green earth that you can lift it. <laughs> right. You know, but if you. You know, and you know, dude, honestly, man, every single fight, I, I've been doing this for so long, that, man, I've worked with guys that fought each other. I mean, like, so many people that fought each other, man, like, it's ridiculous. So it's funny, I'll go to one room, and then I'll go into the next room. <laughs> and uh, it, 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 it's That's weird. Fun. I'm that like, yeah, they're like, the, <laughs> they're like talking shit about each other, and I'm like, oh, man, this is, this is awkward. I feel like that, you know, like a cheating boyfriend, but... Um, <laughs> The thing is, man, it's like you can almost tell by the aura in the room, the mindset of the way somebody holds themselves, the way they talk. Like, man, you know, like when somebody's like, man, I'm going to take this guy out. I'm going to beat his ass. You're like, you know, you're saying the words, but I don't see like, I don't see the the the, the, the body language and the, you know, everything that to, to back that up. And, um, you know, I think that the, it's kind of, you know, same thing like with lifting, you know, like. I'm sure you get under some freaking weight and you're just like, you have those days where, you know, and I'm, you know, and I'm nowhere on the level you're at, but I've had those days where I'm just like, you know what, dude, I don't give a, I, don't, I just don't give a shit. And, uh, <laughs> right. dude, I think, it was, uh, last time when I went to see you, I just, I got to throw this at you. Um, <laughs> you were talking about a guy that, uh, he came in there and he's drinking whiskey on his show. And oh, like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah drinking whiskey <laughs> and, uh, hitting up what? some deadlifts. Yep. Right, bro. I uh, I did that, so I was like, you know what? Screw it. Talking to, so talking about mindset. I was like, you know, I'm gonna give it a shot. So, uh, you know, I took I took a couple shots, man. I'm at the gym, and it's funny because like I was like, I did it with squats, which is probably you're probably like, dude, you're an idiot. And I'm like, you're gonna drink and do squats, but uh, dude, it helped my like my range of motion and just like yeah. you know, get under that thing. You just, like, screw it, man. So <laughs> Conor McGregor would probably be down with that, right? <laughs> I, do, <laughs> I, I did you know, every time I see him um, you know obviously he's in a fight camp or something like right. that so I don't think he can drink but right. I'm, I'm pretty sure that he would be totally down in <laughs> for, for taking a few shots of whiskey that's that's cool it's just interesting you know how you've uh, gotten to this point with working with so many different people um, I know that you're really particular with with certain types of foods and stuff that that a lot of these guys eat so uh, you've told me before you've talked about uh, kefir which is a fermented a fermented milk um, you're still utilizing that with a yeah. lot of fighters and and why is that beneficial do you feel well man you know, a lot, a lot of things that, uh, you know, you kind of break things down. And one of the cool things about working with people in, uh, you know, in all stages is, is you kind of see, you know, this is a functioning body. Uh, and this is, this is a body where, you know, something has went wrong. You know what I mean? Um, when I, when I started working with people, like I'd work with somebody that's 300 pounds and I'm, I shit you not, Mark, they would be like, man, I, I eat grilled chicken, I eat lettuce and I, and I was <laughs> I'm like looking at him like, all right, man, I'm pulling the bullshit card right now. Like, <laughs> like you're 300 pounds, you know, you're not right. muscle and you're telling me you eat grill chicken. Like, and then moving in with some of these people, you realize that these people literally, they don't eat anything. You know, they don't eat that like, many calories what, what a lot of times. Right. Right, man. You know, and you know, it, 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 and you know, the, the old dad is calories in calories out. Like I, I'm so like, there's so much more to it. And obviously Doing what I do, people would be like, well, of course you're going to say that because if I just took your job and broke it down and the calories in, calories out, but it's, it's not, you know. Yeah, um, I fucking hate I that. I, I, think pretty- it's, I, think it's, uh, I think it's misleading. Um, I, obviously, to a certain extent, we, we understand the fact that you can't uh, overconsume food at every single meal and still lose weight. Like, we understand that principle, but 
Uh, I kind of hate it. I hear people talking about like if it fits your macros and flexible dieting and uh, there's way too many other factors in there um, to to just assume that uh, one person uh, digests carbohydrates the same way. Like we all are so some people have food allergies and they don't tolerate certain things very well. I've always just said like, why weigh your food and why do all these different things? Why not just fucking weigh yourself, especially if you're trying to weigh less, weigh yourself. Uh, I weigh myself every day and then I'm not trying to weigh less every day, but I'm trying to see that it trends, right. it trends downward, uh, at some point. And it's just always, uh, made things a lot easier that way. I think if you're not exercising, then it might, if you're not exercising at all, then it might make sense to track your calories because, uh, you are just not expending that much in a day. But also people don't recognize that your, uh, expenditure from exercise is still only going to make up about 10% of, of the whole entire story, unless you're uh, doing some of the things like Connor and some of those other guys uh, might be more like 20% of your caloric expenditure, but it, it doesn't make up as much as you'd think, you know, I think that a lot of people are misguided right. with the calorie thing. Huh. You, know, you, you, you hit the nail right on the head, man. You know, and you know, it's funny that you say that you weigh yourself every day, Like people, the, the, the shit that I hear, Mark, it blows my mind, bro. Like, People will be like, well, I weigh myself once a week. And I'm like, you know, you, your weight fluctuates so much on a given on a given day in right. a week. Your weight fluctuates like crazy. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you'll be know, 47 <laughs> different weights uh, within a week, right? Oh, 100%. And, but, you know, the one thing is, is once you start learning the patterns, like, the other thing, everybody's different, but fundamentals and principles, they all, uh, they're all the same. You know what I mean? It's right. like, if I have, uh, you know, insulin secreted with some person, it's not like insulin is going to do a one thing for somebody and, and, and totally something different for somebody else. Now, obviously, if you're insulin resistant, right. you know, your body's going to, you know, it isn't going to um, look at it the same way, but it's not going to make it do something different. You know what I'm saying? So those fundamentals and principles apply. You know, and I, you know, I, I was talking to this lady and she's like, why would I weigh myself every day? And I'm like, so check this out. Uh, I basically, I had this scale. Right. And what it is, it's like, it's like a, it's a checklist. And a lot of people don't realize, okay, this is what affects my weight. And I have something called true weight. And I have, you know, like, uh, I, I'm sorry, you got, you got your real weight and then you have uh, true weight. Real weight is like, I stepped on a scale, that's my real weight. Is it my true weight? No. And what I mean by that is, I know that, that water cannot make me gain weight. But if I drink a gallon of water and I step on the scale, I'm going to be eight pounds heavier. Yeah, or if you did a really intense of, workout and it was 120 degrees out or something like that, that's not your real weight either. I got you. Makes right. Sense. So now, now, so how many how many of these things do we take into play? Okay, so fiber fiber holds water like it's going out of style. A woman on a cycle holds water like it's going out of style. Didn't get a lot of sleep last night. Ate a lot of extra carbs. Doing an anaerobic workout. So if you do an anaerobic workout, um, like a woman that she doesn't do in the fuel. Uh, uh, repeal phase of her cycle, she'll gain like five pounds because it drops her yeah. progesterone. Um, you know, and you know as well, that'd be like as soon as you do like a hard workout, like you said, you're like, man, I crave potatoes and rice. And your body, because your body functions correctly, it's going to want those things. And what happens is because you broke those muscle downs, it's, it's going to cause inflammation. And you're going to, you'll actually gain water weight from doing a hard anaerobic workout. Mm. But what I, what I tell these women, I'm like, okay, take this out. Take uh, fiber, uh, spicy foods, obviously salt, lack of sleep, cycle, all these things, okay? And you write it down on checklist. And each one of them has got like a, a rating, right? Like let's say cycle gives you five points. Because we all know that a woman cycle, she's going to gain a, a grip load of water weight. Right. Um, well, with that being said, you step on the scale in the morning. Let's say you're on your cycle, you didn't sleep very well, you ate spicy food, you had a shit ton of salt, and you weigh exactly the same as you did yesterday. What does that tell you? You know, like, that should tell you that you're actually losing. Your true weight right. is going down I, mm. because all these other things, you should have gained weight, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does so, make sense. It using, sense. Understanding that. Dude, the scale is a tool, and people, but people don't know how to use the tool. You know, they just didn't step on it. Oh, that's the number, and, right. and that's what I, and me and you both know. <laughs> yeah, I hear a lot of people. people like, um, 
a lot of people, they want to try to tiptoe around some of this stuff. And they're like, I don't weigh myself every day because uh, I don't like the way, like, I, I, my clothes are fitting better. And they, they give you these other excuses. And you're like, no, your goal is to lose weight. Like, have, have the motherfucking scale, like, show less weight week per week, you know? And <laughs> it's just, it, it, there's no other way to, to, there's no other way. You can't really sugarcoat this kind of stuff, especially for people that are fat because they're going to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> they're not eating a sugar coat it. but it, it's just uh wanna, it's just a thing they just have to do it you just have to do it you know bro this you want okay you want to know what we really do. so so here, here's here's the nuts and bolts dude and i'm probably gonna lose so many people uh <laughs> telling you this I'll yeah people fine. get I'm sad you, bro, yeah. they're gonna be pissed off but you know what i i, I always say this because like it, it's it's you know it's it's literally true love. Like if you if you tell somebody like they're perfect and they grow up like like just jacked up their entire life because you didn't have the freaking goal or the balls to be like you know what man you need to work on this you're not perfect. Um, but I would say you know like I would just tell you like uncomfortability creates desire. And the thing is is that that people are not uncomfortable enough. Like so here's one woman right and people are gonna be like this guy's an asshole. I, I love you know, I love her to death and. <laughs> She was she was very very heavy set, <laughs> and uh, I, I'm like, she comes in first things first. I go I do this with every freaking person that comes in, and they're like, uh, I'm like, what's your goal? And they're like, I don't I don't know, uh, lose weight. And I'm like, well, don't eat anything today. Don't drink any water. Weigh yourself tomorrow morning. Go accomplish. You lost weight, you know. And I'm not I'm not trying to sound like a dick, but the thing is, like, you have to have specificity. You know, like you got to be like, you know, you yeah. can't attain a goal that doesn't exist. So yeah, I go through this whole thing, like you know. And we, we, here's the thing: women, men, everybody out there. When I ask them, like, what is it that you, you know, like, what is your goal? She's like, well, I want to lose 15 pounds. And I'm like, you, are you fucking kidding me? Like, if God came down right now and said you can have any body that you want. You would say fifteen pounds. And she's like, "Well, no, probably like 90. And I'm like, "Well, then I don't want, I don't want the, the huge goal. difference." Huh? You can accomplish, the bro, a hundred percent. I want the goal that you, you know, the, the, the goal that you that you want, you know. And that's the problem with people, man. Is like, you know, number one, and I, and I tell this to a lot of my clients, like, you don't know what you got till it's gone, but you don't know what you don't have until you have it. And it's like every time we go out there, these people are like. It ain't worth it, you know, counting calories and, 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 and doing this and doing it. ain't worth it. I'm like, how the hell do you know? <laughs> you ain't never had it. So how do you know it ain't worth it? You know, walking walking into a room and somebody looks at you and they're like, damn, man. I, you know, like, geez, you know, they stop in traffic. People take you seriously. Like, you know, it's just, it's just, it's, it's one of those things. It's true. I mean, there's so many studies that, you know, like somebody walks into a room and they're in great shape. People take them more seriously than somebody's out of shape because, they automatically assume this person is disciplined. This, this person is motivated. But, uh, so, so, man, so here's the thing. This is what I told this poor girl. And, uh, you know, my job is literally not, it, it, uh, I don't know how to put this. It's to create the environment where it's so like, okay, you know what? I look at myself in a sober light. And to get to, to, to get them to their goal, they have to do that, you know. And so I'm like, "What is it you want?" She's like, "I want to lose the 90 pounds." I'm like, "No, no, no. We've already went over this shit." I'm like, "What right. is it that you want?" You know what I mean? And she's like, "Well, I, I don't, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to be alone, you know, at, at 30, you know." Right. And uh, I'm like, "So you want to do?" And she's like, "Yeah, man. You want some this guy?" I was like, "All right, okay." I'm like, "Let me let me, <laughs> let me ask you something. What kind of guy do you want?" She's like, "Well, he's like this, and you know, he's got a, you know." You know <laughs> smart, he's, he's disciplined, he's intelligent, he's in great shape, he's this. And I'm like, <laughs> that sounds like an amazing fucking dude. And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck would a guy like that be doing with somebody like you? And she's like, <laughs> <laughs> like she, she's like, holy shit. And dude, I say it to my boys all the time. They're like, man, I want this girl. She's hot. She's this, she's that. And I'm like, that's awesome. That woman sounds amazing. What the fuck is she going to do with a guy like you? <laughs> you don't even have a job. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> like, get a job first. But, you know, and I, I told, like, I, I tell you that, man, I told her out of love. Like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know, you know, I, I think it was, uh, I, think it was I think it was Dale Carney. He said, like, you want to, you want to catch fucking fish, you don't put cupcakes at the end of the fishing line. Because you like cupcakes doesn't mean they fucking fish like cupcakes. You, know, you put worms on that. <laughs> And uh, I'm like, this is the kind of dude you want. But my whole point is, man, is that I always tell people, if your why is greater than your how, then you can accomplish fucking anything. And that's the biggest problem with most people. So like with Connor, you know, 
he's 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 got that mindset. All he needs is like he, he just he doesn't want to like he doesn't need to to sit down and learn nutrition. He's like, you know what, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow this guy. And that's easy working with people like him because I tell him to do it, he does it. Boom, eats when he tell him to eat. You know, uh, when I go that's to a, other a people, really uh, big big sign of intelligence, I think, because uh, he could clog his fucking brain with a bunch of information from you and try to absorb uh, why he needs these essential fatty acids at this time and uh, why he needs these aminos and all these different things. But he's just way better off just concentrating on what he does and what he's great at. <laughs> you you hit the nail a hundred percent. You know, his team, they go through a lot of, uh, you know, like, you know, strenuous, like, you know, coach Kavanaugh before I started working with, uh, with uh, Connor, he asked me questions and talked and sat down it's one of those things. I think it's like, okay, we got to find the right person. Once they find that person, it's like, dude, he's in charge of this, you know? And, and, um, yeah, they just, <laughs> when it comes down to the nutrition, they're like, what do you want us to do? And it's like, do this. And they're like, we're after that. So you mentioned, uh, uh cupcakes really earlier. Cool. Is there any, is there any room <laughs> for uh dessert, ice cream, like a uh, little treats here and there, or not really like for yeah, in man, Connor's you know, case. Dude, Oh, come on, shit. <laughs> I was like, people, hell yeah, man. Give me a cupcake right now. Uh, <laughs> in Connor's case, no. Like, because, not you know, for, not for this preparation, short... anyway. It is only like six, yeah, it's no, only six weeks or something or whatever, right? Yeah, we, we actually have, uh, I think we have, yeah, we have seven weeks in the cut, so about eight weeks left. But um, everything is perfect. And, you know, the thing is, is, I do give them, like, there'll be sweet things, but it's not going to be. On anything unhealthy, you know what right. I mean? Like, uh, I I hate to use that word unhealthy because I think I you know, me and you are on the yeah. same page. Like, just about anything can be healthy if you eat it at the right freaking time. You right. know what I mean? Like, you might give them something the right with reason. like peanut butter and honey or something in it that's sweet that that yeah. gets them excited, but you're not going to uh, give them a Snickers bar, right? 100%. Even though the even though calorically <laughs> it might be the same thing, right? Hey, George. Exactly. This is- Hey George, this yeah. is Jim McDonald, the co-host over on this end. Um, I have a question for you. You're you're working with both athletes, professional athletes, and basically regular people. Most, from what I've seen, most people who do work with both of those types of groups eventually decide that they don't want to work with um, regular people anymore because athletes are just it's so it's more prestigious and they're more dialed in and you don't have to go through as much psychology like why why do you why do you it sounds like you enjoy doing both why, why do you enjoy both hello 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 oh yeah we lost it there for a second but we can hear you now oh no, oh, no. Uh, looks like our connection's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. Uh, let's just try him again. Jimmy T asked a question and everything goes to shit. I, it all went to shit. All right, we're back. I think we got you now. You there? Sorry, right, boss. Yep. I don't know what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Did you get a chance get, to hear Jim's him. question? You heard his question? I, I think so. It was uh, basically, you know, when people work with professionals and they work with the uh, basically the average person, uh, they, they tend to give up on the average person and just start working with nothing but athletes. Is that correct? Yeah, that's the question. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny because, <laughs> dude, looking at the way things started for me, I started working with like the top athletes starting out. Like it was, it's the weirdest thing in the world. Like when I started that company, it was like, you know, I got John Jones, Brian Stan. I had at the time it was like Keith Yardine, Rashad Evans. Like I could just sit there and you know, I look back. I'm like, man, I never worked for the average person. And, and it, it was funny because I think maybe the fact that people work with the average person and then they work with the professional athlete, I think uh, the same thing might have happened in reverse. It's very intriguing. You know what I mean? Because like I work with athletes and they're like, Roger that, and they do what I tell them, and you know, and and then I and then I go work with a uh, you know, like an average Joe. And they're like, I, I can't do that. Then I'm like, well, it's just like, wait, what? Hold on. <laughs> you, you can't do that. Like, I just told you to drink a gallon of water. You know, they're like, I, I can't do that. You know, so I think it's very intriguing and it's very cool to find out new ways to, to overcome challenges and basically get these people to, uh, to get to their goals. 
So they're just a different kind of puzzle, I guess, to solve. Yeah, no, 100%. The, the puzzle of the average person is so much more difficult than, I mean, it's like if I gave, if I gave, Mark, if I gave you a diet program and you, I mean, like, you know what, how hard would that be to get you shredded? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, I mean, you're always cut. You know what I mean? Though? Like, right. like, like, you know, like, uh, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be hard. You right. know what I mean? It's just like, you got to have, you know, the, the, you know, signs down. And even with you, it wouldn't have to be perfect. But, right. uh, what do you do when somebody's like, well, I can't, I can't drink. Like I was, I was, a, I was a recon Marine for my first six years in the mine Corps. And, uh, I remember I was fighting a guy named Ricky Falsey and I had to, uh, I had to cut 15 pounds, but unfortunately we were out in the field. So it's like, there's no saunas, there's no way to train. So I'm not, I'm, I'm literally in the field with my team. And I remember being cold as shit. And, uh, <laughs> I, I put cold water on myself and I literally shivered for like two nights, man. My team was like, that's the craziest shit I've ever seen in my fucking life. <laughs> I came out of the field, man. I lost 15 pounds. Now, I shit you not, like two months later, I was, I was training out of uh, Lord, Lord Irving's team in, in, uh, in Maryland at the time. Or, uh, no, no. It might have been, might have been Doug. I forgot what school it was, but they, they, they're like, hey, Mandy T. Mm-hmm. And I start talking to her, and she's like, do you have any idea what I do? And I'm like, no. She's like, I'm a college student. She's like, I, I can't be eating like this. Like, she's like, I gotta go to class, you know. Like, and I just, I just sat there in my my head. I'm like, oh my god, you, you gotta be shitting me. Like, right. you're like, I can't, I can't diet because I'm in college. Um, <laughs> I yeah, what about to be like, like, you know what uh, I did last week? It, it's ama- it's amazing when you tell somebody about a diet, and you 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 say, like, here's here's the diet, and they immediately. Uh, Get, they they go into a panic, like an absolute panic attack about like something that you may have taken away from them. You know, like uh, if you were to say you can't have carbs, they're like I can't have my pasta every night. <laughs> like, no, it has fucking carbs. Like whatever the diet is, though, they're they're right. They immediately jump to that and they're they're like terrified. Almost like if you told someone, hey, you can't have coffee for the next couple of weeks, they would they would like, pan- you know, be in a panic attack. You I'd know? be in a panic attack. For- yeah. <laughs> But it's it's like, hey, you know, well, you're asking advice on this particular thing, and we're trying to get you to this particular goal. Why don't you focus on the things that I just mentioned and and work on that, <laughs> rather than having a panic attack about the shit that you can't have? You know, you know, it's funny. One thing I always you know, I always do with people, and it, it's funny because, granted, a lot of people that we work with now, they're you know they're financially, let's we'll say they're financially stable. You know right. what I'm saying? If they're going to have a slap that. It is funny because they, I, I take finances and I put it right next to nutrition. They'll be like, they'll, they'll do a diet for like three days and then they'll be like, when do I get a cheat meal? And I'm like, let me ask you this. If I saved money for three days, right? Or let's say I saved money all fucking week long. And then we go to the bar and I'm like, rounds on me, guys. Dude, I lost everything that I fucking worked for <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in like literally five fucking minutes. And the funny thing is, I, like, I know these people, they're, they're so, like, financially fucking smart. And it's like, if, let me ask you, and I'll tell you this. I'll be like, let me tell you, if you went out and you bought something that's slightly outside of your budget, would you be like, you know what, fuck it. I'm, I'm just going to go into fucking debt because I, I went over my fucking limit. <laughs> right. But if, they'll cheat. They'll cheat. They'll have, like, a little piece of cake or something. They're like, fuck it, I cheated. Might as well really cheat. And then they fucking just gorge themselves. So, like, makes no fucking sense but you know they understand finances and it's like you know if some people you know let's say people aren't financially successful um or you know so i'll work with like relationships you know they're like i gotta do this shit every day like for me and you we understand like you know every single day it's every single day and i'm like you know you have a great relationship with your wife i'm like you tell her that you love her every day. And they're like, well, yeah. I'm like, do you talk to her every single day? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, dude, what if I was like, fuck, I got to talk to my wife every fucking day? You know, you'd be, you'd be like, <laughs> you'd be like, that's stupid. And that relationship is not going to fucking work. You know right, what I mean? Right. And, uh, dude, that's, you know, that, that's one way that people are like, oh, because it's literally, man, it's the same fucking recipe for everything in life. Like, you know, do this, do it every single fucking day. You know, uh, you know, with, with the guys I work with, you know, got lose forty pounds in a specific. Like, let's say you got forty pounds in fucking like two months. Yeah, shit's got to be perfect. 
but I also, you know, consistency is, is more, you know, is more important than uh, a perfect program because if you, you don't, you're able to follow a perfect program for a couple of days, right. you know, fuck it. but if I'm consistent and I'm like, you know what, I, I drink a gallon of water and I, you know, consistently drink a gallon of water for a fucking year, I'm going to have a lot better results than, you know what I mean? So, right. Uh, specifically, you mentioned a little bit earlier about like uh, some post-workout nutrition. Any, anything in particular you're doing with that, or is that just food, or is it certain types of carbs or something like that? No, man. So, okay, obviously with the fighters, <laughs> this is funny. So, for people that are, uh, you're, you're probably going to fucking reach the, the phone and, and bitch slap me, Mark. But <laughs> so, what, what I, uh, when I work with, like, let's say average people, that's kind of like the time I'm like, okay, this is like you want something sweet. Um, I got a couple of fighters. Dude, these guys, their, their sweet tooth is ridiculous. I'm like, oh my god, you guys are killing me. But I'll, I'll let them have like Twizzlers after right, uh, right. after training. Makes sense. You know, it's that dextrose. So you just give them their sugar and shit like that. But for for someone like that, like premium, like so, uh, I always tell people like, you know, the body can only synthesize about one gram of, car- uh, uh, of glyc- or carbohydrate per minute right. uh, because if you use your, your body uses specific transporters. But you have the, the glue five and the S glue one. S glue one is a sodium dependent transporter that that d- relies on dextrose, and then mm. glue five relies on fructose. If you use both of them at the same time, your body can process two point three grams of carbs per minute. So you would be like more than double. Isn't that yeah. crazy? Yeah, more than double. Yeah. So basically, so if you were to we take do, a, something with dextrose and and throw some orange juice in it or something like that, then you would have a something that you would be able to uh, digest faster, basically? Yeah, and, and you have to make sure, because remember, s group one is a sodium-dependent transporter, so you have to have salt in it in order for that, uh, for, uh, in order for your body to activate that transporter. Crazy. So, yes. Yeah, man. And, and you know, it's, a, lot, a lot of people are like, well, you know, how important is that? We got fighters that train, you know, two, three times a day. Yeah. That's extremely important. There's and been, here's uh, the kicker. I don't know. Go ahead. Oh, no, you know, the last thing, a lot of people don't notice. So that doubles the amount of, uh, you know, carbs my body can process. But if I take you in caffeine post, post-workout, that quadruples the amount of, uh, uh, the, the speed in which my body uh, replenishes the carbohydrates. Wow. Four times faster with caffeine after I work out. Wow. That's fucking crazy. So I've actually uh, recently heard that uh, fructose in particular uh, you know, just carbohydrates basically that come from most fruits um, can increase your carbohydrate metabolism by up to about 20%. Have you heard stuff like that before? No, so what they're saying is if you just eat those specific carbohydrates, it increases your ability to process. You yeah, become absolutely. Like more carb adaptive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. You can uh, kind of upregulate. I can send you over the information. I have a, a clip uh, from YouTube of uh, this. Uh, <laughs> A doctor talking about it and he also talks about like carrots helping to lower your estrogen because of the types of fibers that are in them i'm sure you've probably heard of some different things like that lowering cortisol levels uh by detoxifying right. your intestines basically undigestible fibers basically just ripping out uh your uh wow. cortisol and estrogens out of your body type deal wow all fancy, yeah. all fancy, cool stuff, you know. But that—that's fucking overwhelming information. Uh, four times the amount of carbohydrates. Um, so, yeah. what, what, what kind of amount of carbohydrates are you uh, having these guys eat? Are they just killing a one-pound bag of uh, Twizzlers after the, <laughs> or red vines or whatever? <laughs> no, I'll tell you, the guys that I go out for are not going to be eating fucking Twizzlers, but uh, <laughs> you know, like, like. Uh, I'll literally make the shake depending on the actual workout. Uh, but it'll be anywhere from, you know, honestly about 40, 40 grams of carbs to 100, 150 grams of carbs. Wow. Um, so, that's a, pretty, that's a good yeah, amount, man, yeah. It's, yeah. Cool. And it's funny because, you know, nine times out of ten, you ask guys like, okay, you know, your, your body is, is in an anaerobic state when you're, when you're working out. And you've got to top level. I'm like, you think you could burn 800 fucking calories in a workout? They're like, of course. Oh, absolutely, 100%. So if we just do simple math, like obviously your body's always burning a mixture of carbs, fats, and proteins. But if you burn, you know, 800 calories and you're anaerobic, let's just, you know, for math, say, keep it simple. It's four calories for every one gram. It will take 200 grams of carbs to replenish whatever you just lost. 
And nine times out of ten, you know, people take they'll take a protein shake, right? After you're done working out. Mm. And uh, I'm like, well, what, what do you, are you, I mean, are you using protein as an energy source? I'm like, well, I, you know, if you are, there's something seriously wrong. Um, you use your carbs. And that's, you know, like, you need to replenish. And some guys will have, like, a banana, and then they'll ask them, this, like, dude, by the end of the week, I feel like, shit, man, what, why is that? <laughs> you ain't got no fuel left, man. Mm -hmm. you, you know, your, your body is winning that mean. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of you guys, we up the carbs and they actually start dropping weight. So, crazy how, how do you, weight. um, let's shift gears here for a minute. How do you feel about the fight coming up? Oh, my God. So, dude, I mean, being a part of the biggest fight in history, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> it's insane, man. It's, 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 it's almost, it's surreal. Like, sitting here, I'm in a house next to Conor McGregor, like, you know. That's wild, um, yeah. It's fucking nuts, yeah. It's, it's super, you know, I feel, I, I really, no, I truly feel blessed. I but, don't know uh, what the uh, the odds will, will be, you know, when the fight actually uh, happens, what, what that'll look like. But um, how do you feel about uh, you guys being the underdog? Do you kind of take that, take that position on? Yeah, I mean, man, <laughs> I'm just a fool guy. I'm not the one stepping in the ring, but I, I mean, I think it's, uh, it's kind of cool because, you know, nobody ever talks bad about their client. Like, you know, no matter who it is, I don't give a crap who you ask me. Like, you know, right. who do you think is going to win? I'm like, I'm going I'm to say my client. Yeah, of course. But in, in all, all seriousness, man, like this guy, like the shit that he's done, like it both, okay, I'm not going to lie. Like I worked with him when, uh, when they were like, he's going to, you know, he's going to, fight uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather. And everybody's like, is that really going to happen, George? I'm like, dude, there's no way that he's going to fight Floyd Mayweather. You know, the UFC's <laughs> not going to let it happen. You know? right. Next thing you know, like, Coach Kavanaugh's calling me. He's like, hey, man, when can we get you out of here? And I'm like, I, I, you got to be shitting me. How the <laughs> fuck did he pull that off? And uh, but he did. You know, and the guy never seems to feel right. So, man, a lot of people think that he's going to get a, a paycheck. I'm telling you, he's trained to win this fucking thing. And I honestly, man, I, I'm excited to see this shit because I really think that there's going to be a lot of heads fucking turning when, when he fights Floyd um, on the 26th. Yeah, we're we're fired up too. We're super excited to see it. I mean, you know, the, the fact that uh, something like this was even in his head um, is, is pretty amazing. Do you have any idea how it how it came to be? Honestly, I don't, man. Because you know, we uh, he just got done fighting uh, Alvarez, and um, you know, uh, the she uh, you know she, she came out that you know she was having a baby and stuff like that. We were in Ireland for that fight when he was fighting Alvarez, and and uh, no, man, like nothing came up, nothing was said. And so when I, when I saw it, like a couple of days after the fight, and like on you know the Facebook ads and all that other stuff, I thought it was. I thought it was BS, and um, I saw Coach Kavanaugh. He was he was uh, with uh, Gunnar Nelson, and I was like, "Dude, <laughs> everybody keeps asking." He's like, "Yeah, man." He's like, "Dude, it's uh, it's gonna happen." And when he said it, I was like, "Holy shit, really?" I was like, "Okay." <laughs> so, um, yeah, man. You know, I, it, I think honestly, he had. I mean, he had. It wasn't something that he just kind of, you know, that fell into his lap. Like this is something that he thought up, and yeah, um, they both they both. You know they're they're very you know I mean they're they're, they're great fighters but man these guys are also great businessmen so right you know what the fuck you're doing <laughs> cool man well um what one last thing because uh, you know a lot of our listeners are power lifters and they're gonna want to know you know how to cut weight for a contest and stuff like that I realize it's a complicated uh, process there's a lot that goes into it. But about how much weight uh, could somebody lose that has a 24-hour weight cut? Um, how much weight do you think they could safely lose? I'm sure it probably percentage-wise uh, matters, but let's just hypothetically say it's somebody that weighs about 200 pounds. About how much weight would you say somebody could safely lose and still perform well on the platform? Uh, 15 is like a straight up, like you're not going to have any problems. Right. Easy cut. It, you know, it all comes, it all comes down to how you reload, you know, tell you the truth in terms of that. 
Um, so it really matters what you eat after you weigh, weigh yourself in. You know, we see a lot of guys like shoveling down like donuts and stuff. Maybe that's not the best uh, plan of attack. No, man. No, hundred percent. Like remember like things that I just, like I just said, like the transporters, you know, making sure that your body is using both of them to, to, to reload the, the, the glycogen, your body, you know, it's got 24 hours, you know, osmosis, transfusion, all these things, I'm sorry, diffusion, all these things have got to take place for you to reload. And it's like the way that they go out, you know, is the way they have to go in. Oh, I got you. Um, the, you know, with a with a guy like if you got a guy that's 200 pounds, and let's say he's 10 percent body fat, that takes in a huge role because you know each gram or each kilogram of muscle tissue holds 13 grams of glycogen, and mm-hmm. each gram of glycogen holds three grams of water. So you cut that out, they drop a considerable amount of weight. Um, somebody that's mm-hmm. lean at 200, man, they can drop 20 pounds without a freaking problem if they mm-hmm. do it right. So yeah, that's how much. What... How much how much you cut? I'm yeah. About that. How much yeah. You? yeah. The most I, the most I've ever done was about 20 pounds. Um, and the, the yeah. safest for me was always like 12, 15. Um, I know some guys yeah. have done like 30, you know, some guys have done, gone a little bit further. Yeah. But it's just, uh, to me, it's, it just doesn't make sense. Cause it's like, that's the main focus is, uh, you have so much anxiety around trying to fucking make weight rather than worry about what the weight is that you hit on the platform. So a certain extent, it gets to be a little too much. And then there's certain, some guys that are, you know, on the path to setting like all time world records and stuff. And, and they probably should go for it and they probably should drop 20 pounds and, uh, you know, swing for the fences. Why not? Right. Right. Now I'm, I'm hundred percent with you on that, you know, in, in, in the world of powerlifting, and, you know, like I said, in, in the world of boxing, being cut weight is stupid almost. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you don't want to be cut in the last week. George, awesome having you on here. It sounds like we have to have you on here a lot more because we could probably talk to you for fucking hours. <laughs> um, what, where, where, like, how did you uh, obtain all this knowledge on on nutrition specifically? Is this stuff you've researched? I know you said you went to some classes and stuff like that, but uh, is this stuff that you've uh, just researched over a long period of time? Yeah, man, you know, um, this, you know, I, I know all my, my, my answers are so long winded, you know, you'd be like, dude, can you just answer yes or no? But, you know, <laughs> grow, growing up, man, my old man, he taught me something that was just like, man, it stuck with me. But, uh, you know, he's like, you know, son, you know, like 99% of people in this world can't read. And I was like, that's, that's bullshit. <laughs> I'm calling you bullshit on that one. And, uh, He's like, he's like, read this. And he picks up a can, and I, it said, I said, that, that says, Miller High Life Champagne of Beers. And uh, he's like, now, did you read that, or did you regurgitate that? And uh, I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, reading it means that you see a word for the first time, and you understand what made something an it and that and all, and you can pronounce a word because you know how to fucking read. He says, else if you, can't, if you can't do that you're, you're just regurgitating things that you've seen before you regurgitate that shit and i i was like wow man i really that, that's interesting and the funny thing is when it comes to nutrition mark that's what i see with people man people just regurgitate shit that, that like literally is in a book like you know if you ask somebody that is it literally just got certified like well how much weight can a man lose they'll be like well two to three pounds per week well, how much weight can a woman lose they'll be like one to two pounds per week and you ask them why, and they'll be like, fuck, I don't know. That's what the book said, you know? <laughs> and so I just kind of I just kind of went out, and I wanted to search and, 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 like, really find out, like, okay, if I can't answer the why behind something, I don't want to ever just be like, well, because that's the way it is. Um, so, yeah, man, I've been that, – that's all me and my partner do. We're, we're kind of nerds when it comes to it. That's <laughs> just, we sit there and study and – that's about the extent of it. Well, I could tell you've been coaching people for a long time because you had probably in a in a just uh, five minutes of talking, you had like about thirty uh, quotes that were that were pretty awesome. <laughs> but I really liked uh, I really liked what you said about uh, you can't you can't obtain a goal that doesn't exist was really awesome. Yeah, and then you also. Uh, said something to the effect of uh you said this one fast so i don't know if i got it right but uh you don't know what you need until you got it i thought that that was really fucking cool um because i th- see i see a lot of people in a situation where you mentioned that one woman saying she wanted to lose 15 pounds and it turns out she really wanted to lose 90 
Uh, a lot of people, they'll lose weight or they'll make some changes. They'll get stronger, whatever the case is, whatever their goal is. And once they make some of those changes, they realize that they're shortchanging themselves. So they'll, they'll lose 15 pounds and go, oh man, I, I, I probably need to do that three or four more times over <laughs> to kind of get to where I really uh, want to be and should be. So it's really interesting, really cool quotes. You don't know how us. bad you looked until you start to look better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. hundred <laughs> oh, percent. Yeah, man. See, as Lewis always said that, he's like, man, he's like uh, a good man doesn't know how bad he is until he starts to, you know, t- or, you know, try to become good. It's like a, it's like a sober man doesn't, or a drunk man doesn't know how drunk he is until he's become sober, you know? <laughs> right. Right. And, um, uh, <laughs> It's funny that uh, that you say that, man. Like all those quotes, like it's uh, yeah, dude. I, I coach people all the time, and you're right. Like one of my favorites was, you know, you don't know what you got till it's gone, but you don't know what you don't have until you have it. You know, right. and I say that to everybody. It ain't worth it. People are like, it ain't worth it. And I'm like, I have never had anybody get to the goal that they wanted and be like, shit, it wasn't worth it. No, everybody's like, it was more than worth it. You have a lot to be proud of, uh, you know, all these different people you've worked with and, and things like that. But what is, uh, what do you think the one thing that sticks out the most uh, that that uh, either a client has done or you've done with a client? What do you think the coolest thing that has happened so far in your uh, career? Man, um, what, <clears throat> it's great. So I, I was, uh, I was uh, a groomsman at this guy's wedding and I, I sat down one night. So, I was in the Marine Corps. Uh, this guy's like my brother and his best friend came in from Texas. And, um, you know, he's, he, man, he had a rough, a rough gig, you know, I, I believe he lost his, his brother, his mother and his father all oh, within wow. a couple of months you know, near the holiday. And, uh, when he, when he showed up, he was 420 pounds. And, um, you know, my boy John was like, Hey man, you know, can you talk to him? And, I sat down, I started talking to him and uh, I'm like, I'm like, give me six months of your fucking life and I'll change your life forever. And uh, he's like, okay. And I'm like, no, no, man. I'm like, the fact that you fucking just said, okay, doesn't mean, it tells me that you're not, you're not serious. I'm like, what that means is, you know, holidays come, weekends come, somebody makes your favorite fucking pie. Like, I don't give a shit. Six months. You, nothing goes into that fucking mouth unless I tell you, you do the work that's a, so no shit, man. He put his house on the fucking market and moved to uh, to Quantico. He literally moved in with me and John like the wow. next week, man. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, that's fucking so, cool, <laughs> dude. He's like, I'm fucking serious, and I'm like, all right. He made that choice, which is the most awesome thing. Well, man, he went from 420 pounds to 240 pounds, and uh, <laughs> like two years later, he's like, you know, me and him are still like best friends. But, uh, you know, invite me to his, uh, his, his wedding, man. I'm like, fuck, how cool is that? That was just, it was, you know, one yeah, of the coolest things that's ever happened. That's fucking outstanding. Well, good luck to you and good luck to Conor McGregor. And, uh, we'll catch up with you again soon. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate you having me on here, man. Thanks again. All right. See you, bud. Thanks a lot, George. Well, that was cool as fuck. Yeah. He's, uh, you know, I, I kind of forgot for a minute there like how knowledgeable he is yeah i forgot that when he came in last time to the gym that he we started talking and then i mentioned something and he started going off on that sciencey stuff and i was like oh shit <laughs> this guy knows a lot of stuff that your uh, average person doesn't so well it's nice cool. to be able to take some of the mystery out you know at, at yeah. least have some place to start because everybody, yeah. as we said, everybody is so individual. I know the audience but. is like, why didn't you talk to him more? But I don't, you know, we could literally talk to him probably five or six hours and only scrape the surface, I think. I'm so. sure, yeah. So we'll have to have him uh, in-house uh, again soon. I know he'll be back out here for Bones, uh, Bones Jones versus Cormier. Uh, he'll be in L.A., so maybe we can try to get him to <clears throat> fly this way. Uh, Hop up here and for, see us. For at least a little bit. would be really cool. Anyway, uh, kind of an unconventional podcast. First time we did something like that, we called a few different uh, people up. We talked about some fighting. We talked about some weight loss stuff. Uh, that stuff that he said about um, the dextrose and fructose and caffeine. Uh, I'm going to have to go back and listen to that's that That's going to hurt my head for yeah. the next couple of days. I'm going to be trying to figure that one out. Um, hopefully, we can utilize something like that so Smokey can stop being so fat. <laughs> and maybe heal up his bicep. We can dump some carbohydrates into his into his uh, injured bicep, fix the guy up. Something that causes your body to produce 
a lot of human growth hormone. We can't time. really uh, make his pecs any bigger. They're they're already <laughs> no. they're already maxed out. They already uh, enter the room before him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got those huge titties. Yes. Uh, 15% off howmuchyourbench.net when you use the code POWERCAST, so make sure you guys do that. Multiply your hustle, multiply your muscle, and may all your shits be tapered. Shout out to the rest of our sponsors, Ape Man Apparel, for people who lift heavy weights at apemanstrong.com. Compex Muscle Stim Products at compexusa.com. Use the code POWERCAST to get an additional 28% off. Power Magazine, the world's only strength magazine available in both digital and print at thepowermagazine.com and bodybuilding.com, the world's largest fitness website and supplement store. Go there for all of your fitness and supplement needs. I am the Jim McD on all the social media, which is basically uh, Twitter and Instagram and a little bit of Facebook. And you can follow the show on Instagram at Mark Bell's Powercast. Yay. Right. We're done.